people, it's your girl Adiola. A lot has happened since we went on a break. But first of all, Ogabuari, exactly what is going on? Honestly, it's like the man is not even in tune with the masses at all, at all. Eh, <laughs> my Oga, you're welcome to this program. It's like you're just doing your own thing. How long do we have to shout that people are hungry? Christmas this time around was not like it used to be a Mr. President. You seem to be forgetting that 2019 will soon be here. Eh? Very soon, eh? <laughs> How can people not be paid their ad and salaries for a whole year? And the Senate is busy buying 4.7 billion Nara exotic cars for the Senate President Bukola Saraki and some other executive senators. Ah, wallahi talai, that is not correct, Mr. President. People cannot afford to kill chicken, common chicken for Christmas. And we see millions of dollars eh, being spent at your daughter's wedding. Eh? <laughs> How do you think that people felt? And eh? congratulations, Jare Zara, you know, too. Well. How do you think people felt? I'm just saying that you seem to be insensitive to the plight of the masses. Even those of us that are living abroad, we are feeling it. We are feeling it like crazy. Even Kole Doa is feeling it. Shut up. I'm already speaking for you. Let me talk. You know, we cannot close our eyes when our relatives are hungry. I mean, I've been telling you guys that we work daytime, nighttime, part time, and overtime. Now we have to add extra time on top of everything before we can pay our monthly bills and help our people at home. And Mr. President, do you know how many Nigerian students abroad have dropped out of school in the last one year? You know that one dollar is now how much? Like 470 naira. No, be so. How can any parent pay the school fees of their children abroad? Don't beg me. I say don't beg. Ah, I beg. Don't beg me. Oh. On top of that, you banned land importation of cars. Ah, eh, wag ba me. Eh, wag ba me. When you did not provide alternatives, as you guys know, most people are no longer able to import cars from the US because by the time you convert your naira to dollar, <laughs> it becomes chicken change. You know, be so. One million naira now is like three thousand dollars. Father. So a lot of people have been buying cars from neighboring countries. So, but the government of Nigeria just decided to ban land importation. Mr. President, <laughs> well, I tell you, this is not correct. You and I, we need to have a cup of tea together. Just me and you, let's sit down and talk about Nigeria. Who is advising this man? You just took away some people's livelihood. As if the situation is not already bad as it is. Before you do something like this, you're supposed to make sure that people can get cars of the same value within Nigeria. Uh, my dear, how many car manufacturing companies do we have in Nigeria? Innocent Motors. Uh -huh. Innocent Motors. In Innocent Motors. That's it. That, that's it. Just innocent. You see what I'm saying? A country of 180 million people. We have one solid made in Nigeria car company. I beg, forget about all these foreigners that are assembling their cars in Nigeria. Those are not made in Nigeria and they are expensive. Oh, by the way, Innocent Motors is doing a wonderful job. In fact, I've had the opportunity of patronizing them twice and I was not disappointed at all. I would recommend them anytime, any day. So make sure you check them out if you're trying to buy a car in Nigeria. This is his contact. Wait a minute. I just give them and free adverts. Ha! I beg, I beg. No, we need to call him after this service. Mr. Innocent, in case you're watching, it's your girl, Adela. You owe me big time. Hey, you understand? <laughs> you owe me. But there are people that buy cars in order to go and resell them in Nigeria. And all those people just lost their livelihood. How do you ban land importation of cars when you're yet to develop our automobile industry? We need to, as a government, identify people who are talented that could lead them into transportation design. There are many youth in Nigeria who have similar talents and can really take it far, as far, and even further than I have. Thank you, my father. God bless you. A wonderful man. Very, very inspiring. For those that may not know, this is Mr. Jelani Aliyu from Sokoto, Nigeria, a top auto designer at General Motors here in America. Him and his team designed Chevrolet Volt, and they also designed Bumblebee. That is the car that they featured in that movie, Transformer. Uh -huh, the movie that made billions of dollars. Imagine the... Uh sure-footedness of a rhinoceros. That is where I take my inspiration. I design my cars to be aggressive, unique, and distinctive. Very inspiring man. If you sit down with him for 10 minutes, you will be inspired. The man told me that instead of us assembling cars in Nigeria, Nigeria has the resources and the brain power to make cars from scratch and even design our own cars based on our geographical features. Not just to assemble vehicles, but to create them design them in that country. We have extreme heat, we have extreme dust, a lot of humidity. These are the conditions we face every day inherently designed vehicles for that. Ben, he told me that by now Nigeria should be designing cars that will be running on solar power, you know, based on the fact that we're generously blessed with sunshine in Nigeria. So if only you had called me, Mr. President, and everybody knows my number, I'm always on speed dial. I would have told you that, first of all, empower young people that have been designing prototypes. You know, young people that have been designing cars. You know, we've been seeing, hey, we've been seeing so many of them like this. Once. Ah, 
You know, can you imagine if these guys are living in some countries? God knows that by now they would have been making real cars. Eh? How do you think that Toyota started? How do you think BMW started? How do you think Nissan started? Second of all, I would have told you, Mr. President, if only you had called me, that we have so many Nigerians that are working for automobile companies in various parts of the world. In Germany, here in the US, you know, like this man. We have so many Nigerians that are working for big automobile companies all over the world. Why can't we pay them to put in some time in training more people in Nigeria and start our own made in Nigeria cars? Ah, you should have called me so that people will be patronizing Nigeria as well. People will be buying from us instead of us buying from outside. In fact, you won't even have to shut down the land borders because we will be shipping out cars to other African countries instead of us shipping in cars. And speaking of advice, <laughs> Mr. President, you know, move closer, please move closer because obviously I'm the only one telling you the truth <laughs> and you need me. You know you need me. And now from the look of things, some cabals may not let you see this video. Hopefully they will let you see it <laughs> in Adiwa. Do you not know? what is happening in Southern Kaduna. Like, just tell me that you don't know. Just tell me you don't know. And you know what? I'm not even asking you to release a press statement. No, not the press statement we go chop. But Fulani Hats men have killed thousands of innocent people in Southern Kaduna and you're not bothered at all. It's like you're not bothered at all at all. Ah! They killed more than 800 people in one single day. What? Ah! Father, where is thy face? Human beings being slaughtered left and right. 800 people in one single day. My dear, what happened to I belong to nobody? I belong to everybody. Is that how he said it? If you belong to none, who belong to you? Eh? If you belong to none, who belong to you, Baba Buan? Mr. President, they are killing Christians in South Africa. Do not, please, rewind back. Rewind back to March 28, 2015. Baba millions of Christians voted for you. Me, I'm just reminding you because, you know, 2019 will be here very soon. It is uh, the year after the coming year. It will be 2019. And nobody is making this about religion, by the way, before some people will start sending me emails. Because as you guys know if they are killing Muslims I will talk so please don't send me email that I'm making this about religion no it is not but the same day that they killed 808 people they burnt down 1422 houses they burnt down 14 shops they burnt down one primary school and 16 churches they did not burn down not one mosque but somehow in one day they burnt down 16 churches and you are telling me that they are not targeting Christians so please we are not making this about religion I'm just saying that Mr. President do you really think that Christians would want to vote for you in 2019 me, me i'm just saying you know when they've been shouting all this while and you are turning blind eye and the worst part of it is that you're a fulani man mr president you are a fulani and the killers are fulani herdsmen how do you want us to believe that truly you belong to nobody and it doesn't even matter whether it's a christian or a muslim or an atheist one nigerian life is too much to lose this is very serious because the other time when militants were bombing pipelines you did not waste time mr president to send battalions to go and get them under control those ones were bombing pipelines. They were not killing people. These Fulanese are killing human beings. Unless you're trying to tell us that the economy of Nigeria, you know, the oil is more important to you than the Nigerian people. Sure, you understand? I said, don't beg me. Yes, yes, I know that he eventually deployed the army to Kaduna, but what took him so long? Honestly, I'm really tired of all these politics that we are playing in Nigeria while people are dying. I look forward to the time when Nigeria will have a president that regardless of your religion or where you're from or where you live, everybody Everybody will feel safe and feel included and treated well. Eh? Give me that song again. Ah, I beg, I beg. Hey, full stop right there. What is this? You see, you see, you see? Is it not because of people like this that we are where we are right now in Nigeria? Why are you playing me about song Joe and ah, I beg, I beg, I beg. Mind yourself. Now they are, they are singing gospel song. Are, are you kidding me? These people had the opportunity to make Nigeria great. They did not. Now they are singing hymns. Hey, what does that mean? If you want to do something good, maybe now that you are old, you feel like you failed Nigeria. There are so many things you can do apart from singing hymns. You can also have foundations. You can sponsor Nigerian students through school. You can sponsor international students that are stranded. I beg, I beg. Don't, don't get me upset. Is that the song that I asked you to play? Say Baba, you see the Moving on to Ethiopia, as you guys know, the government has declared a state of emergency since October of last year, October 9th. This is January and they said that the state of emergency would last for six months. Can you believe that more than 11,000 people were arrested for protesting when they declared the state of emergency? In fact, soldiers were going from door to door harassing people. And they are detaining these people at military camps. I'm sure that by now you know that there's no freedom of protesting or saying anything bad against the government. By the way, the Ethiopian government has been saying that the state of emergency has helped them to bring 
stability and order. Please, please don't be fooled by that. Please don't be fooled by that statement. It's a lie. What they are doing now is making sure that the government controls everything. In fact, they said that they would release 9,800 prisoners, but that is after those prisoners received training on how to behave. Isn't there a name for that? That's what we call fascism, right? It's an extreme form of dictatorship where the government wants to reorient people and change the way they think. And then they will talk about nationalism and tell people that the state is more important than they, the citizens. This is what was used in Germany during Hitler's last time. And it's also what's been practiced now in North Korea. You see what the ruling party is trying to turn Ethiopia into? Too. So far they've released 4,000 people with a strong warning that they must be civilized when they protest or else they will pay a price. Meanwhile, they said that 2,449 people would not be released, but they will be arraigned in court. I wonder why. Last month, hundreds of high school students tried to protest. They were meant to celebrate Ethiopia's Nations and Nationalities Day, but their gathering was quickly stopped and many of them were arrested. These are secondary school students, high school students. Meanwhile, they continue to arrest prominent opposition leaders for speaking out against the forceful land grabbing that is still going on and against corruption in government and lack of services such as running water and electricity and good roads. Imagine people complaining about electricity and they are arresting them. At least 22 leaders of the Oromo Federalist Congress have been arrested, charging them with terrorism. Just imagine they charge them as terrorists for speaking against the government. Merera Gudina is just one of those that was arrested. He was actually arrested upon his return to Ethiopia after meeting with members of the Ethiopian parliament in Brussels. I'm telling you, it's messed up. But the thing is, the ruling party cannot go on like this forever. You can't. Why can't we learn from past dictators? You know, it breaks my heart that this is what they are doing in Ethiopia, but you guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just in room. So moving on to Kenya, it's been a month now since doctors and nurses went on strike because the government has failed to honor a 2013 comprehensive bargaining agreement which states that they would pay doctors 300% of what they've been paying them. And the government agreed, they signed. For years, doctors in Kenya have complained that their pay does not commensurate with the hard work and long hours that they put in. The same for nurses. Right now, the lowest paid doctors in Kenya are getting between 127,000 shillings to 144,000 shillings per month. That is about $1,232 to $1,400. $144 per month. That's how much they are paying lowest paid doctors, which I myself think is ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous. $1,000 per month for a medical doctor, seriously? And they are putting in all these hours? So how much are they paying nurses? And the highest paid doctors in Kenya, some of them are like specialists. Those ones, they are presently getting between $328,000 to 538000 shillings per month. That is about $3,160 to $5,192 per month. So the least paid doctors are saying that they want to be getting paid at least $3,000. They said they want between $3,138 to $3,300. And the highest paid doctors are saying that they want at least $8,000. They want between eight to $9,000 per month. But what I don't understand is that the government has agreed to this increase in pay, but for more than three years now, they've refused to honor the agreement. Why? Instead, the government brought in military doctors. Look at that. Is that fair? Meanwhile, so many people have died due to the strike. Imagine pregnant women in labor with no doctors and in fact some private hospitals also join in the strike not only that i saw a video last month where patients with mental illness escaped from their facility because medical workers were on strike <laughs> That's really scary. I was afraid when I saw that because those patients, they could harm themselves or they could harm people that they come in contact with. By the way, one member of parliament in Kenya has been saying that if care is not taken, that Kenyan doctors will start applying for jobs outside Kenya in other countries. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them if they will treat them better outside Kenya. You know, this doesn't just apply to doctors, by the way. We just don't take care of all civil servants in Africa. Which is why I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow teachers go on strike, you know? It's doctors is nurses and then teachers. That has been the trend, not just in Kenya, but in various African countries. The real problem is that African countries don't adjust salaries based on inflation and cost of living. Our money depreciates every year. Inflation rises and cost of living goes up. Not only that, our currencies lose value, yet we're still earning what we've been earning for years. Look at Nigeria, for example. Our minimum wage is 18,000 Naira, but what you could buy with 18,000 Naira two years ago, you can no longer buy it today with 18,000 Naira. 
career. So this salary problem cuts across all professions and those who feel it the most are the pensioners because they're already out of the workforce. No one is fighting for them. You can imagine someone that was getting paid 600 Naira as pension in 1982 is still collecting 600 Naira as pension in 2017. Meanwhile, what you will buy with 600 Naira at that time, you can no longer buy it with 600 Naira today. Forward thinking countries normally adjust their minimum wage and pension based on the cost of living and inflation. You know, we need to start doing the same thing in Africa. If not, people will continue to protest and strike once the salary can no longer cover their living expenses. And it's not even that people change their lifestyles. It's just that the money is no longer of the same value like it used to be. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> So for our rapid news of the week, Gambia's army chief has pledged his loyalty and support to Yaya Jamey. <laughs> As you guys know, Jamey is still insisting on not stepping down. And now the army chief says that he stands with Yaya Jamey. You guys know what that means. You know, that means that they're not willing to step down without a fight. And of course, he's got the army on his side. So we are watching on Plasma TV to see what Yaya Jamey will do because they're supposed to swear in the new president on January 19th. And moving on to Burundi, President Pierre Nkurunziza has hinted that he would be seeking a fourth term in office. Okay, okay, okay. You know, this guy just forced himself on the people for a third term. Do you guys know that about 1,000 people died during the 2015 protest? About 1,000 people. Now he's saying that he will do another term after this one. In fact, the way he said it is like he's contemplating changing the constitution so that he could run. This is what happens. Once a dictator, always a dictator. Clearly, he doesn't care. They will have to kick this one out. And my first shout out of the day goes to Christine Izuako, a 20 seven year old nigerian american who recently finished her phd program while working full time and traveling the world literally this lady was traveling the world you know she's the vice president of gen trend at united airlines by the way you need to call her after the service maybe she can get us some free airline ticket um <laughs> anyway so she was doing her phd while working full time and she said that she was the youngest student in her class and the first black woman at her school to complete a phd in security engineering at the university of colorado in colorado springs so Kudos to you, Christine. We're very proud of you. And my second shout out of the day goes to my sister from Somalia, a 34 year old Ian Omar, who made history as the first Somali American to be sworn in as a lawmaker in the US. Omar came to the US as a refugee. Just imagine that she came as a refugee, but she became a citizen and walked her way up to become a lawmaker in Minnesota. Let this women inspire you today that anything is possible. Congratulations to both of them. We're very proud of you. You guys know. I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Growing up in Kenya, my sister and I were very close. But like any sisters, we fought a lot. She always got new clothes and I always got hand-me-downs. Now she's putting her children through school in Kenya. We still fight sometimes, especially when I send money for the kids. I tell her, buy some clothes for the younger one and we both laugh. With nearly 500,000 locations, our app and online, this is moving money for better. Say bye bye, you see they do. Fight corruption in the room. If I like change, but the other room. If you belong to none, who belong to you? Hey, if you belong to none, who belong to you? Baba boy, play me that song one more time. Say bye bye, you see they do. If you belong to none, who belong to you? All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next week, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.